was born on March 14, 1930, in Corsicana, Texas. Uh, I lived there uh, until I was five years old, and uh, we moved to uh, Sulphur, Louisiana, where my mother's family resided. And we lived there uh, until I uh, moved to Baton Rouge. I began school in Sulphur in the first grade. Oh, I went to uh, Frash Elementary School. Uh, <clears throat> and we lived, <clears throat> excuse me, at that time, about a mile from the school. But since that time, of course, uh, we moved to the center of Sulphur. And from that point on, I was never farther from probably a block, block and a half from a school, Sulphur High School. And uh, we lived directly across the street from the, from the high school. I began at the University of Texas. Uh, and uh, it didn't take me long to figure that I could not afford the out-of-state uh, fee. And uh, I had to work during all of my college days, really. Uh, and I worked, even as a young boy, all the way up to uh, going to school. So I, I was used to that type of thing. But uh, uh, Really, I, you know, after the first semester, I came back to Louisiana, and I went to McNeese for a semester, and then I came to LSU, and um, of course I graduated in uh, commerce at the time, and uh, I think they call it the School of Business now, and I got my degree uh, before I went to law school because I wanted to make sure I had a degree in hand. And I began law school in uh, 1952. I spent uh, a couple of years in the service. Uh, I had to do my time because I was in the advanced ROTC and I had to uh, complete you know, the duty after that. Uh, so I spent my two years. Uh, I, I, of course, graduated as a second lieutenant. And when I went in, I went to uh, Fort Sill, Oklahoma. After Fort Sill, of course, they sent me to Korea. Uh, I was a uh, artillery officer at the time, and. Uh, uh, then after <clears throat> going to, getting to uh, Korea, I was uh, in a position where I had one year of law school, so they put me in a courts and boards officer, <laughs> that type of things. And uh, that's in the adjutant's section. But uh, the officer that was the head of that section uh, you know, uh, returned home, and uh, so they put me in that position uh, as a second lieutenant. Of course, uh, it's a major's uh, job at that time. But uh, after spending uh, about uh, six months there, I uh, uh, had a... Uh, uh, a, a, a general assistant uh, division commander come in and he wanted an aide <coughs> and he needed an aide uh, or he thought he needed an aide uh, as an artilleryman and because uh, he was in the infantry. So he uh, selected me as his aide and I, I went to the headquarters and that's where I uh, returned <laughs> Louisiana. Of course, at the time, uh, you know, I was asked if I was going to remain in the Army, and I told him frankly, no, that I, I wanted to go back and complete my law degree. So I came back uh, to uh, Louisiana, and of course, uh, 
I had, I wanted to uh, get back my present wife. She, we met at uh, LSU when I was a junior and she was a senior. I mean, uh, a freshman. Uh, and we dated for a couple of years. And I went into the service uh, and uh, spent that two years. And when I came back, then we uh, got married. I, that's when I came back to law school. Uh, and uh, as I say, I'm probably the, the wisest thing for me because uh, she helped me, you know, during those years. Uh, she taught school and uh, she had graduated from uh, Memphis State University because she went home after I left LSU. Uh, but uh, she taught here in Baton Rouge for the three years that uh, it took me to get out of law school. Uh, and uh, of course I worked along the way too, but uh, uh, I have uh, of course two children a son and uh, a daughter. My son graduated from LSU, uh, and uh, my daughter went to sit there, graduated there in social studies, and then graduated from LSU uh, with her master's. Uh, when I got out of law school, I went back to Sulphur, where, uh, of course, I knew a lot of people, and I thought that that would be the place. Uh, you know, when I got out of law school, of course, I didn't have the top grades, so it wasn't, uh, I wasn't interviewed by a lot of people to go into a practice here in Baton Rouge or anywhere else. And I knew that I, I could go back and open my own uh, practice, and I thought I could do well. After practicing, uh, a few years, not many, I don't remember how many, three or four, uh, the city judge would appoint me uh, to sit as ad hoc for him. In those days, they could do that. Uh, and uh, so I, 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 I did that uh, part time every now and then for him. I will say that I. Uh, always wanted to be a judge, I mean, at, at, because I, I considered it being in position as a lawyer, you, you wanted to help uh, people, and that was a, a good way to do it. I thought it was a, an honorable position, and uh, so I, I, I really ascribed to do that. Decided I was going to go ahead and uh, run for office. Uh, I was in the Constitutional Convention as a, as a delegate. And uh, after that, I said, well, I think I do want to go on the bench. And four years later, I, I, I think four years later, I uh, ran for office. I served uh, as elected uh, judge uh, almost 20 years. I retired in 1996, at the end of 96. Uh, from that point on, I've been appointed by the Supreme Court as an ad hoc or pro tempore judge continually, uh, really. So, and I fell into position in Lake Charles on, on my court that uh, uh, one of our judges uh, became ill, I was appointed to serve in that position. Another one died, I was appointed. And over the years, I mean, I continually had uh, appointments uh, at the 14th Judicial District Court. And I, of course, after, that was until I moved to Baton Rouge, uh, but I also have appointments throughout the southern uh, part of Louisiana. Uh, you know, I've worked in several parishes. I always try to, to make, in my 
decision making is to uh, have the law first, look at the law, and determine what I thought the law uh, entailed. Then, of course, I apply the facts that were given to me, and if I felt that one side or the other, you know, had the preponderance of the evidence, then uh, I just came down to make my decision in that way. Uh, but the, there's a lot of decisions that you make that just are uh, excruciating because so many of them, there's, there's really no answer, uh, especially in criminal matters. Uh, you, know, you want to be sure that uh, you took everything into consideration, but uh, a lot of matters, uh, the law already said what you had to do, like second degree murder, uh, it's a lifetime uh, sentence. And, uh, but they were always excruciating because you knew there's human beings involved. And, uh, uh, but you know, after, after you make a few decisions, you try to you know, forget about it, go, go to the next one, uh, but feel, feel comfortable in what your decision was. If I have a legacy, I want to be remembered as being honest, fair, and impartial. That's the greatest thing to me.